fue responsable de la primera unidad de monitoreo y evaluación del Departamento de Asuntos Agrarios de Sudáfrica, cuyo principal objetivo fue revertir las políticas agrarias del apartheid. Desde 2007 y 2009, ocupó el cargo de vicepresidente de la Asociación Sudafricana de Monitoreo y Evaluación y actualmente es subdirector general de Monitoreo y Evaluación en la Comisión de Servicio Público de Sudáfrica. Indran posee una maestría en geografía. La motivación es basada en las circunstancias históricas que heredamos en 1994. Así so que, mientras tuviste la primera elección democrática y tuviste una nueva constitución que came en shortly thereafter, it was important for institutions to be set up that actually ensure that good governance is practiced. So you have institutions like the Human Rights Commission that looks at rights. So it was both uh, backward looking in to bring about transformation, but also forward looking to develop a stable development orientation uh, or oriented democratic culture where people for the first time in the country would be able to criticize government and talk openly about performance. I think it's relatively good. Um, it's uneven across the country. If you look at the period from 95 to about 2000, uh, many of the, uh, uh, much of the leadership of the non-government and civil society sector was actually absorbed into top positions in government. Uh, but what has happened is uh, the funding has dried up in, in, in many instances and many of the, uh, the NGOs have had to consolidate. But we still have a very uh, strong and I believe vibrant non-government uh, sector. Um, we, we helped to, 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 to form this association. And over 50% of the participants were from the NGO sector. It was a 300-person uh, conference. We had academia, we had uh, internationals. And I think that clearly indicates that there's a good, uh, th th there's great willingness for the NGO sector to, to engage. I mean, they, are, they provide a critique of what's going wrong and the Public Service Commission does the same. So to an extent, we do have a, uh, uh, a common understanding so that results are not perceived as being something that is only done by an institution uh, of government, but really done for government. And I think that's been quite positive. It helps in terms of entrenching the independence, which is critical for ME uh, institutions like public service commissions anywhere in the world. Uh, so we're trying to make sure that it happens with or without us and to capacitate that sector out there in terms of the, the, the critique. The main demand for monitoring and evaluation in the country comes from the political sphere, the executive. Uh, this year we had, for the first time, a Ministry for Monitoring and Evaluation set up in the office of the President together with the National Planning Commission. And the public would know, for example, if, this, if the, the benchmark is an improvement in literacy. Whilst there's been a high uh, spend, the output has not been good. Uh, for example, in terms of education and, and, and in terms of crime. But you still have uh, low levels of literacy and high levels of crime. And The, the new system that's being rolled out, uh, which I believe is quite unique and, and quite innovative, will bring the public in so that they would know what to expect from government. Uh, so there's different tiers of m &E, so that would be the political. Uh, our main users also is, uh, happens to be parliament. We have a multi-party democracy, as you know. So we believe that apart from the monitoring uh, and evaluation element, which would have the components of your, your enlightenment, your transparency and your accountability, Uh, the, there is a need, given the, the, the current context, also to focus on, on corruption. So uh, a large part of the institution that I work, work for actually tracks what goes on when the public says something. I think our main influence comes from both within the country and, and outside. Within the country, uh, people want to assert their democratic rights. And the reports that we produce, oftentimes, we disseminate in a form that is accessible. So when the officials of the Public Service Commission disseminate reports, they do it on radio in local language because radio is the most accessible medium, especially in rural areas in the country. The other pressure point would obviously be the opposition, which would use the evaluation results to hold government to account. So we put the information in the public domain in a balance between being the police, the prefect of the country, but by the same token also trying to ensure there's learning because it is a new public administration. So it is the challenge between calling a spade a spade but not being a hired gun. We've looked at supply and demand in our conceptualization of the system over the last 10 years. And all the products that we have on the table have been uh, couched due to some demand. Um, at the highest aggregated level, we have what I would call a meta-evaluation, which is the state of the public service report, where we actually demonstrated that the public service needs to be in a certain state 
in order to cope with the one million visitors that we will see on our shores in a very short period of time. The work that uh, I focus on a lot in my current position as the head of monitoring and evaluation pertains to departmental audits. We produce the score, we give a percentage because that's what the public understands. Apart from that, the issue that is very, very critical is poverty. As you know, South Africa has a, a high uh, Gini coefficient and uh, the, the, the thrust of the developmental state is to, through its various programs, uh, increase the quality, improve the quality of life. We've just come out of one where we looked at poverty and measurement. Last year we looked at poverty and xenophobia. You must have seen a lot on, 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 on TV. And prior to that we looked at poverty and women. We present reports to the president, to cabinet, the highest uh, you know, uh, office in the land. So we had the monitors monitored, <laughs> evaluated. And they provided information which said, look, in these areas you're doing well, but in others you're not so good. And the areas that they pointed out where we need to sharpen, uh, which is quite critical, is the area of dissemination, which is a key area in terms of uh, your question about supply and demand. In about 2000, public servants were allowed to take close on 20 days per year on sick leave. This is in addition to your normal annual leave. And they did so. <laughs> and we also quantified, we worked out it was costing the state billions in terms of lost uh, capacity. And on the basis of that evaluation, we came up with a, um, a recommendation to change the policy, which subsequently was changed, where the number of days was reduced, there were new arrangements for managing this, which I believe has, has saved the state countless. So we came up with a system a few years ago where you had to, on an annual basis, declare your financial interest, everything. And there are countless other examples that I could uh, cite, but those are two which I think have had huge economic, uh, they have economic uh, implications. One of the innovations that we've implemented in the last three years, we call it inspections. So it's a methodology where we um, anonymously would march into police stations or clinics and stand in the queue and then see how long it takes and how well we are served. Last year we looked at the police uh, stations throughout the country, critical for the forthcoming games next year, and we found there were various areas where um, the, there were weaknesses. We have just completed inspections in clinics across all provinces and we found anomalies, for example, the way in which medicine is delivered, the way in which patients are treated, uh, the, the, the infrastructure. So that is a, a quick methodology where we use our um, expertise as keen observers. Too often monitoring evaluations uh, units look at government from the perspective of the expert, which may be quite, uh, you know, uh, not in tune. So it's a very flexible approach that changes all the time and is context specific. Uh, we use as many languages as possible, as many mediums as possible, but we have an extremely competent, uh, extremely enthusiastic team at the Public Service Commission. The key objectives of the monitoring of, of the Public Service Commission is to promote good governance. We do so through the nine constitutional values and principles for public administration, which if you take it as a collective would become a definition of good governance. But more importantly, we believe that the work that we're doing in South Africa as the newest democracy on the continent needs to support democracy because we are quite resourced and capacitated. But I think what's important is our latest uh, innovation in January this year where the Association for, for African Public Service Commissions was formed. We've got about 18 countries where we're trying to develop a network of networks so that the commissions like the South African Public Service Commission can then support evaluation in the countries. So our objectives are, are various. It includes dealing with uh, corruption. It, deals, it includes dealing with the adjudication of grievances of public servants. So, so if you look at it, if I were just talk about units of analysis uh, from an individual head of department right to, a, to, to the community and a department, there's different uh, focal areas that, that we zoom in. It's not that we constantly are, crit are critical, although we tend to be that quite often, but where there's good practice, we also highlight it, so that it doesn't just become a, uh, another form of auditing. That's a big debate um, in the associations. Uh, we believe the, it, it shouldn't be looked at as a dichotomy. Um, the monitoring, obviously, is a part that should be done by departments. Uh, we should come in and do the evaluation. But evaluation is much long term, it's much more costly. Uh, so we take the view that you need to do both. And hence, we have termed, we call it monitoring and evaluation. So for example, when we come out with a, a status report on the number of heads of department who have uh, filed their uh, performance agreements, that is monitoring. But when we come up and we see the impact of 
a good performance agreement on performance, that would be the evaluation. Uh, you may be dealing with someone else's data. And we take the view in the Public Service Commission that, uh, you know, as Ray Rist would say, garbage in, garbage out, you need credible information. We have an intervention program, and the, the program would mean where, based on the uh, situation reaching a certain level of crisis, we had, so that's the, the, the intervention when one goes in almost at a provincial level. But then you also have interventions where we went into the Department of Home Affairs and we had high-level people that went in and then came up with systems. We have a program where, which is publicly uh, accessible where we have our business plan so everyone knows what's coming out when. But we allow space in our plan to also go in and do what we call ad hoc evaluations. I think one of the critiques from the, from the discipline point of view of monitoring and evaluation is oftentimes it takes too long from the production to the actual uh, production of, uh, f f from the investigation to, to the production of information. We have a budget from Parliament which has been quite static over the last few years. So we're trying to raise the quality of the people that do evaluations. We've got 150 staff. The professional staff would be less than that. And their job is at their level to uh, network, to configure the best way in which to bring in capacity to get the work done. So we allow for the provincial uh, specific information, but still within what we believe are norms and standards in terms of what is good practice or not. And we try to, we've created the system in order to uh, reduce the uh, discretion or the bias of the researcher. When it comes to the interpretive part, that we keep for other projects where we would then bring in a higher level of analytical capacity to, to deal with that. The one tool we'd like to share is the transversal public service MD system. Uh, we believe it's useful to share because we've actually taken values and converted it into a measuring instrument. But there's other tools that, and, and instruments that I think uh, methodologies and protocols that are also useful. The methodologies on uh, citizen satisfaction, on the participation, on the area that I find extremely exciting. But we now have a, um, uh, let's just put it as, as a, a toolkit of various instruments to measure various societal issues to bring about um, change. And in all the work that we do, we uh, consciously build in an element of, of knowledge building. So for example, we can point where the recruitment has taken too long, but then we provide you with a toolkit to improve your recruitment. And we do it in genuine partnership with the association. It's uh, purely, it's, it's collaborative. We have government, we have all the sectors, which uh, is extremely Im important because there was nothing before. Service standards must be indicated. Cost of service must be indicated. And the reason for that is, once again, to remove the arbitrariness uh, and the, the, uh, the area which is, which is open where people may then exploit and find a way to, uh, uh, to manipulate the system. I think the main lesson is when you are independent and you have the protection of parliament, for example, constitutionally in terms of the Public Service Commission Act, no one may interfere with the work of the Commission. And you've had many instances of that. For example, um, there was data uh, had to be provided to central uh, police, to the, to the national uh, uh, head of police, from police stations on crime statistics. So there was a compliance with the system, but it meant that it was complying for very uh, perverse ways. So you could get a whole lot of perverse indicators coming through. So the lesson would be is, uh, whilst the independence is important, evaluators are not God. And they should not assume an arrogance where they just push a system through. But the, the second lesson, which I think is very important, is you need to be able to demonstrate at all levels the value of your system. Then such a system can collapse. The greatest challenge for the Public Service Commission remains the budget. We are competing for a budget amongst a whole lot of other institutions that are also important and to the development of the country. Also, we have extremely uh, high quality universities in South Africa. But even though they teach public administration, oftentimes their content uh, excludes what's happening in terms of like the Public Service Commission. Um, and uh, yet another approach would be uh, certain evaluations genuinely done as a partnership. So if you're looking at poverty, it would be uh, problematic if government and government-like agencies are the only ones on a team that addresses poverty. And I will be talking about it this afternoon in that 
so that you get the most critical voices in terms of what's happening. I think it's important at this stage for the various evaluation associations and networks, which we now fortunately have um, in all continents, is to come together and come up with an agenda for evaluation for the next decade so that we don't compete between ourselves who's got the largest turnout in an evaluation conference. Uh, but we really uh, raise the bar through recognizing that there's different ways in which knowledge is, is, is handled. The last thing is, I believe the Public Service Commission is where it is because of the, the friends and partners it's had over the last 10 years. And we've been very fortunate even in, in having had uh, outstanding support from, I think, intellectuals and leaders in evaluation. But by the same token, we want to uh, replicate, magnify, uh, adapt, and we can only do so through the networks, not through government. Government is bureaucratized and has its limitations. Mm -hmm.